Apple Reality Pro in the spring, new Mac Pro, maybe this is why. Touchscreen MacBooks on the horizon, but for what? And increased costs on three nanometer chips. I'm Ike Cave David, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. So, Apple Spring event this year, we are probably looking at March, most likely. But while a lot of Apple YouTubers are saying that it will be hyper focused on the AR VR headset, which I maintain is likely to be called Apple Reality, would we really need Pro at the end of the first version? It doesn't make any sense to me. And there have been new rumors about what that device will feature. Beyond the already reported triple displays giving focused and peripheral vision, the device is expected to feature 120 degrees of vision for full immersion, an H1 style chip to give extremely low latency connections to AirPods and an M2 level chip for processing, maybe even two of those. And recent reports have stated that Apple Reality could well feature carbon fibre construction to keep the weight extremely light on your head. Now, any chance that Apple could carry that over to the AirPods Max, I wonder, or even a future MacBook Air? It would also feature an onboard battery with additional battery packs being able to be worn on the belt or waistband connected via MagSafe, and that's presumably going to be the Mac version for extended battery life. Inside the headset, magnetic mounts will allow custom prescription lenses to be added for anyone that needs assistive eyewear, and these or the regular lenses will adjust automatically to your eyes when you place the headset on. Even the straps will apparently be interchangeable quite easily, presumably using a similar system to the Apple Watch straps. I'd also assume, and this is just an assumption, that the foam around the eyes will be removable magnetically, just like the ear cups on the AirPods. Max, meaning that you could have multiple sets, perhaps for different users in the home without sharing the sweat. Nice. Of course, the thing that's still up in the air is what on earth Apple is going to do in terms of the software. Now, I don't imagine that there will be the nightmare verse that Meta has created, but right now we know a lot more about the technology than the functions, and that's likely to be where Apple absolutely excels here. Now, let me know in the comments what you're expecting. Next, Mac Pro, the system that ruined Apple's plan for a two-year transition. And it's still not arrived. And the latest rumours that we've already touched on before say that it's going to look just like the Intel Xeon version from 2019, but with an ultra-level chip inside. Not the extreme that we'd hoped for, and without user-upgradable RAM. So what's the point? In fact, you guys have been asking me in the comments. Uh, Marcin Kowalczyk asks, uh, Max Tech in their video M2 Ultra Mac Pro, was the weight worthless? Said that the Mac Studio was going to be put on hiatus in terms of chip upgrades because of it being too similar to the non-extreme Mac Pro. I find this hard to agree with. What are your thoughts? Now, I'm not convinced that just because the extreme chip isn't coming that we won't get a pair or even four ultras, just not on monolithic silicon. That would make the most sense to me, perhaps even with the individual SoCs on their own PCIe style cards and possibly replaceable as Apple Silicon develops further in future. It would be along the lines of what the Mac Pro G5s did way back in the day when dual processors first arrived on their own individual board with their own coolers attached. The expandability otherwise will be in terms of I.O. and storage on those cards, but I have another theory about the probable timing of this Mac Pro, which is apparently being tested using 13.3 version of Mac OS Ventura, meaning the release is likely to be somewhere around the spring. I wonder though if the headset and the Mac Pro being announced together is really for developers. Perhaps there's some kind of specific I.O. cards for connecting reality development hardware to the Mac Pros for creating software for these, which could well be a part of that reasoning. That would also give the developers a little bit of time ahead of WWDC so that when they come to do the sessions, they have actually got some useful questions to ask. All of that being said, Europe will probably force them to be USB-C connected, though actually I don't remember seeing VR headsets on that list of products. And that is more about charging than connection. I do also think there is a decent chance of seeing the M2 Pro and Max MacBook Pros at the event, which I can't see Apple press releasing, even if these are as simple as a spec bump, given that we've not seen either of these chips before. Now, the Mac Mini with M2 and M2 Pro could get press release launched just soon after the event, or even just given a very quick nod during the event if there's no real redesign there. And speaking of the MacBooks, we're now hearing that Apple is actively developing touchscreens for portable Macs, 
but don't hold your breath as it sounds like 2025 is the earliest that we're going to be seeing them on sale. I've never been someone that wants touchscreen Macs, we've got iPads, however Mac OS would need some serious overhaul in terms of the interface to make touch practical in terms of the size of touch targets for example, so things like the minimize, maximize and close traffic lights in the top corner of your windows would need modification, perhaps you could do a long press and it could pop out a larger version of these for fine control. Now Steve Jobs himself said that touch screens on laptops didn't make any sense ergonomically and I think in most cases he's right but he also said oh a stylus right we're gonna use a stylus no <laughs> no who wants a stylus and then we've got apple pencil so in terms of the good use cases first you're going to be using your mac perhaps to just watch some content while doing other things in the kitchen for example and it can be quite convenient to just be able to tap the skip button on the screen for YouTube for example to get through your ads if you're not actively using the Mac trying to find the cursor and then scroll over to the button and stuff you'll have got to the end of the ad and it'll start the next one then you've got another five seconds to wait um, it's much easier to just poke that screen that would be you know a nice little quality of life addition I don't think I'd want to be using it all the time but you know scrolling through recipes that kind of thing all good I'd personally though find Apple pencil support more useful I think and I still have the dream of an Apple Pencil enabled iMac that can fold down to a drawing board slant just like Microsoft Surface Studio as much as it pains me to say it that's something that Microsoft absolutely nailed in terms of design it's just a shame you had to use Windows with it but let me know in the comments what you think the future is for touchscreen Max 2. I'm really interested to see what you guys have in mind and why it's going to be a good form factor. And we have an IK of Answers question from Team Kinetics. IK of Answers, as TSMC have suggested that the 3 nanometer wafer will cost up to 20% more than a 5 nanometer wafer. Do you think Apple might put binned A17s into the iPhone 15 Pro and an unbinned A17 into the iPhone 15 Ultra? This could further differentiate them and justify the extra premium and minimize waste on a more expensive production process. Or will they just charge more for everything because Apple? So here's my thoughts on this. I don't think that having uh, the wafers being 20% more expensive is actually going to affect pricing at all because we're going from a 5 nanometer chip to a 3 nanometer chip which basically if you're going to use the same number of transistors that means that the individual chips will be about 40% smaller so you can fit more chips onto that wafer so even though you're paying an extra 20% for the wafer you're getting 40% more chips therefore it should actually be cheaper if they don't increase the transistor count they will increase the transistor count. So I think it's going to be a, there and thereabouts. I don't think there's going to be any real differences. What will affect it is what the difference in yield is. I don't see them needing to do, uh, you know, binned chips into the, into the pro iPhones and not into the ultras. I don't think that's going to make any real difference. And although you say it would differentiate it, it really wouldn't in terms of the general public. Nobody knows what a bin chip is even when you've got seven or eight gpu cores they just don't really know what that process is and what the real difference is so i don't see that being the way that they go and i don't think the pricing is going to increase as much as you think but as usual let me know your questions down in the comments section thank you to the patreons up here for helping to support the show and we'll see you in the next one want the latest apple news leaks and rumors subscribe and ring the bell